guys, and welcome back to Get Alive, the show where we don't just tell you to get alive, we also show you how. We hope you've been enjoying the show so far, and today we've got more tips and more techniques to show you how to get the best out of your life. That's right, Maritza, and that's exactly what we're doing today. We're having a bit of a workout. We are. We're at PT469 in Melbourne. We've got our own gorgeous personal trainers to show us how it's done. That's right, we've got Carmen helping you out over there, and I've got Nick, the owner of PT469. And Nick, I have to say, you are the world's tallest personal trainer. It's probably true, it's probably true. So Nick, why do we need a personal trainer? Well, we just want to make sure that you're doing things safely, effectively, and also just getting the best out of the time that you've got to work out. Right, well, I'm looking forward to this right. next hour. Yeah, yeah. Are you ready to get started? Yeah, yeah, well, let's go. I think so. We're going to enjoy our workout while you enjoy the show. Let's go. In today's show, we'll learn how to put love in our life through enhancing our relationships. And if by love you mean kissing, then pay attention to our special segment on lip care. There's another mind-bending segment from our resident psychic, and Erica King is back with some more health tips. But first, I bet you've never heard of Biodanza. Here's Melissa to tell us more. I'm here with Melissa McDougall from Growing Bones. And in the last couple of weeks, we've been speaking a lot about movement. So we've come out here into the park to talk about a new direction in health called Biodanza. Melissa, what is Biodanza all about? Well, Biodanza is a form of dance that originates from South America. It brings about an integration of movement, music, and human connection. So it's a dance class? Yeah, pretty much. It actually feels like a lot of fun, but it, it is grounded in quite robust scientific principles. It was developed by a psychologist and anthropologist in Chile. So the class goes through a sequence of exercises. They differ every time, but there's usually an intention to the class. And so people are invited to participate in certain movements to a certain type of music to bring about feelings of joy and happiness and influence that connection with others. And is it all about being present and accepting that time as your moment? Yeah, absolutely. In a class, people are encouraged not to talk too much, not to enter their mind too much, but just to listen to the music and integrate the music with their movement and to really feel what it is to move and to feel without going into thoughts, thinking about what we're going to have for dinner. It's that connection with others that differs from Biodanza, from Pilates or yoga or anything like that. Yeah. And there's a lot of research in health that says that social support and, and robust social relationships are really important for all areas of health. That's where it, is, it really covers ground where a lot of therapies don't, that it does encourage that human interaction and quality human relationships. Through doing my work, I really feel like the body and the mind and the emotions are interconnected mm -hmm. and that freeing up our body can help us relate to people in a more balanced and open way yep. and, and nourish us through those relationships as well. So you've got an Osteo Moves app, which we've spoken about in previous episodes on Get Alive. Mm -hmm. Does this fit into Biodanza as well? I feel so, and, and it's just about freeing up our bodies to free up our minds. If we can move our bodies in different ways to be free, to hold our posture in an open way, we can be receptive to others and, and then improve those relationships in our life. Amazing. Well, we've learnt so much from you on your Growing Bones segments on Get A Life. Guys, if you want more information on all of this, please head to our website at getalife.tv and follow the Growing Bones links. Thanks so much, Melissa. Thank you. Well, that looked like fun. What do you think, Nick? Maybe a bit of dancing for our next PT move? <laughs> I don't know about that, Talia. We're going to try the TRX cables today. Let's see how you go with these. All right. These look a little scary, but... Yeah, good. Just lean back, lift yourself up. Great for your back and your arms. Right, OK. I definitely feel it. I definitely feel it. All right, while I do this, check out our next segment with Erica King. She's got a great recipe for you using one of my favorite ingredients, salmon. That's great, Dahlia. A hundred more. A hundred? I don't know, maybe, maybe two. One. Hello, I'm so excited. I'm going to show you how to make an extremely quick, very delicious and super inexpensive meal. We're going to have some baked salmon with fresh herbs, some sweet potato mashed with coconut milk and some stir-fry greens. 
in about 15 minutes you're sitting down and enjoying this meal. So what we do is we start with a little piece of salmon, only $2.10 for this piece of salmon, anyone tells me it's too expensive. Salmon's so good for you with all the antioxidants and the omega-3s. So a little bit of lemon, olive oil, a little bit of mixed herbs, any kind of herbs you like, a little bit of black pepper, a little bit of salt and into the oven. 10 minutes on high. This delicious sweet potato mash, just get your potato nice and small because that'll actually be much faster to cook, which is important. Then put your stir fry veg into your wok again, a little bit of olive oil, macadamia oil, whatever you prefer, a little bit of salt and pepper onto the stove. Look, it's out of the oven. How good does that look? This is a restaurant quality meal in minutes. Making it look good on the plate is super important. So nice selection of colors, beautiful. How good does that look? Now the most important thing, Taste. Come on, George. Come and see. Oh, fingers crossed he likes it. What do you think? Thumbs Good. Up. Thumbs Yay! up from the crew. Beautiful. You'll love it too. Love it. Bye. Thanks, Erica. That looks delicious. I'm definitely going to be making that one at home. Now, nutrition is really important and it ties in perfectly with fitness and exercise. Carmen, what have you got next for me? That's right, so we're going to do some step ups, just starting with your right foot. Okay. Not too bad. So, if you guys are looking for love or wanting to enhance a relationship that you've currently got, you've got to check out this next segment closely. Now I'm going to get you to hold these. Okay. Whoa, they are not light. Let's hope we get this in one time. I'm here with Kathy from Fire Up Coaching and Dean who's a relationship coach. This might seem like a massive question and I'm really hoping you've got a nice simple answer for us. But how do we get the best out of our relationships? I really do think the, the most important thing about getting the best out of a relationship is really having a, a really solid relationship with ourselves. You know, I think uh, that we can't really see, I suppose, anything else other than who we are. So making sure that we've sort of you know, aware of what's going on inside our own thinking and addressing stuff that we probably need to address. I think that's a, I think it's a really good first step to allow, I suppose, any real relationship to thrive. I think a big thing is that we just don't notice whether our relationship is based on equal values and what's important and supporting each other and being our best in that relationship or whether it's kind of a negotiation of needs is that I need you to make me feel you know special and you need me for whatever reason and I think I learnt that a long time ago it took me a long time to get it right mind you some people will tend to be the rescuer in a relationship so as a child they got significance and, re and recognized for being the helper so as they go through life they become the helper in relationships and whilst that might be good to a point if we're always rescuing someone else it may mean that our own needs are not being met or you'll get people who are really the victim and you know that everyone else is luckier than me, the reason you've got a great relationship is because you know, you're prettier or you know, all those things that people tell themselves that create this victim mindset. And, and then there's the people who've grown up sort of having to really fight for everything or battle their way through childhood and, and become a bit of a persecutor. So they actually can be quite controlling in relationships and that's really unhealthy as well. I think there's a lot of people out there that are living a life of a fantasy. They think that there is this so-called ideal relationship, mm. this, this soulmate, you know, this, this illusion that we're all going for, you know, this, you know, they've got a tick, it's like, you know, the, the tick box, you got to tick this and tick this and tick this. What I believe to be true and what all my clients believe to be true is that the people that really connect to us are the people that push our buttons the most. 
Like, I can't, I cannot, I, it seems so simple. But the ones that we learn the most about in a relationship, this perception that, you know, like I come home and everything's so good, why do they keep on bringing me down? Like my wife does it. But they're the people... We'll have to edit that out, you know. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. We're the, they're the people that, that allow us to really connect with what's important to us, yeah. that allow us to learn about ourselves. And so I think finding value in supposed conflicts you know, there might be things that we don't like in our partner. And let's be honest, there are things. But by finding out what it is that, that really is, how can I find the value in that for me, which will allow myself to grow and in turn allow a relationship to grow versus, you know, pointing the finger outward and saying, you know, you know why are you keep on doing this? Why are you doing that? You know, you should be doing it this way, this, this, this. But actually saying, you know what, why don't we all just start reacting with kindness? Yeah. And those people that we love the most, the people that we probably don't spend as much time in our relationships and relating to, they're the ones that make us humble. They're the ones that allow us to live that life of inspiration and mm. I suppose really connecting to love. Mm. You know, and they're the ones we learn the most and uh, they're the ones that are going to push our buttons the most. It's so true, they do push <laughs> our buttons. I love you honey, but you know what it's like. <laughs> Good advice there. Thank you, Dean. Thank you, Kathy. We're going to see you both again next week. What are we going to talk about then? We're going to talk about healing from past broken relationships and moving on. Hi, I'm Pam Bradbury, a psychic and medium who's been connecting with people for over 25 years. Each week, I get at least 100 messages from people all around Australia asking me questions and for help. This season on Get Alive, I'm going to get out there and meet some of these people and together we'll share some of their stories. I'm seeing you at the Grand Canyon with this gorgeous, dainty girl. Correct. She's stalking my Facebook. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not stalking your Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> is she on Facebook? Have you put her on Facebook? Uh, no, I went to the Grand Canyon with her. And, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Uh, she's tiny, she's petite lady, yeah. she talks a lot with her hands, she's very European in the way she comes across to me. Oh, she's so European. She is, yeah. she's European? Yeah. Oh, fantastic. But apart from that, um, there's all sorts of other things I see around you and it's, a lot of it's to do with what you do and your, your vocation and, yeah. and your life and, and your work. And it looks to me as if you're not quite sure whether this is something you want to stay with. Yep. There's a big question mark over your head and you're, you're trying to make a decision as to whether you should change the course of action that you've taken or the commitment you've made. Yeah. I just want to caution you to go slowly with it. Okay. You know, like you've got so many other changes in your life that do you need to change your job as well? Right now, probably a good idea to hang in there with what you're doing, yep. okay? However, someone headhunts you and you go for an interview and they offer you the job around about April next year, take it. Yeah. Even though you're going to be going away and they'll keep the job for you. Okay. All right? I'm now going to work with Alan here. All right. Oh, I'm holding my breath. You're holding your breath. Good okay. <clears throat> now, Alan, I would like to say that the mediumistic side of my work is coming through here. Um, and I, whilst I see your mum in the spirit world, uh, she's got lots of messages for you, and in particular about this little boy. So she obviously wasn't around recently, so she d you didn't know that she actually knows you've had this little boy. He's only nine months old, and he's um, about to have his first Christmas. He is. So she wants to say congratulations, and it's wonderful to know that you're going to have this ripper of a Christmas and you've got him this special car thing that's motorised. You're going to get it for him for Christmas and he's in this car. Oh my he's God. in this car and he's buzzing around this land room. So watch out for this kid because he's 100 miles an hour. Wow. Okay. That, that's funny you said that because yeah, I've put that on lay-by. That's actually really funny. Well, there you go. He's in it and he's buzzing around in this car and it's his best present. So as he gets older, you're going to have to make these cars bigger and bigger. So was there a lovely garden in your own mum's house? Did she, was she quite good with the pot plants? And she loved her little garden in the flat in yeah. Carnegie, I remember. Yeah. yeah, she loved it. She always had the pot plants in a row. Yeah, on the balcony. Yeah, put a spoon in there and <laughs> dug around. That and, was her garden yeah. after she, we moved her in there. Yeah, yeah, she's telling me about these. You know, this is why she loves this. Yeah, this the setting, yeah, yeah. And probably why she was encouraging us to 
work in this space today because yeah. it meant a lot to her, being out in the fresh air and being, being uh, you know, present to the beauty of the plants. <laughs> that was really weird. Like, I would never do a lay-by for a start. I don't know how she picked up that I put a, a um, like a toy, a car, to, a car away. Or, yeah, you well, know, as I said, just... I've had a reading with her before and uh, she was spot on, so I came here expecting, oh, I knew what to expect and um, she delivered, I think. <laughs> Pretty, pretty, spot spot on. On, pretty spot on, yeah, absolutely. What's our next exercise? Well, next, Talia, we're going to be doing some crunches using the uh, Bosu ball here. All right. I've done crunches before, but these do seem a bit more challenging. Yeah, the ball definitely makes it more challenging. Now, I wanted you to go right back. Oh, yeah. That's the one. That gets it. <laughs> so if I wanted to get a six-pack, what would I need to do? Well, you need to do these regularly. Like any training, you do it consistently, you're going to get good results. Yeah, so making it a habit. Perfect, yeah. Well, if you want more on making good habits and breaking bad ones, here's Melita. Hi, guys. This week, I'm with the lovely Melita from Breaking Bad Habits. We've had a couple of chats. We're just going to wrap it up today with a little bit of an overview of how to create new positive habits as we kick out the bad ones. Is, am I right, Tim? That's spot on. So now that we've looked at how you actually break the bad habits, like the sugary habits and the needing something sweet or too much wine, it's how do you create the good ones? Mm. How, do you, how do you make those positive habits that will move you towards your health goals? All right, so walk us through creating new positive habits. So there's, it's similar to breaking a bad habit. You want to put in place a trigger. You want to understand what's going to trigger my new habit. Is it going to be a visual trigger, like seeing your running shoes beside your bed? Is it going to be an audio trigger, like having an alarm? Will it be when you're with a particular person? The key thing that I find with creating positive habits is you want to pick the easiest ones first. And there is a bit of a hack to that. There are a couple of habits that you can put in place that make everything else easier. And they are? Well, exercise is actually one of them. Because you think about it, when you start a, an exercise habit, you, yeah. get in, you get into your groove and then all of a yeah. sudden you're, you're choosing to eat better foods yeah. because you want to feel better when you're exercising. Yeah. And then you might choose to prioritise sleep so you can get up early and exercise. There are a number of those types of habits that are almost keystone or, or create that cascading effect of positive health habits. And, and it's all based on the science of wins. And what I mean by that is, once you start one thing and you experience success, you, you want to keep going with that success. Yeah. In fact, that's what we often say, if you, if you can't find the motivation to start a new habit, whether it's exercise or something else, yeah. there's a whole science around how you start a new habit when your motivation is low. Yeah. And that's to start small, yeah. like tiny, in fact. Yeah. So if it was exercise, it's just putting on your shoes. Yeah. And that's it, you might put on your shoes and sit back on your couch. Yeah. But once that becomes habitualised and you're doing that day by day and it's an automatic habit, then you build complexity. Yeah. So then you, it's about getting outside your front door. And once that's a habit, then it's walking for five minutes or running for 10 minutes and building on that. I think it's also, as we wrap up, I think it's also important for people to understand that different things work to greater and lesser extents for different people. So some people, I love training alone. I train with a, a training partner, but I'm happy to train alone. It doesn't affect my intensity, doesn't affect my productivity or efficiency. But, and so there are people like me, then there are people who can only ever train when they're in a team or in a group environment. So I think recognise all of those things and go, okay, if I'm looking back, I'm much, I'm 30% better when I'm part of something. So be part of something, join a team, train with a group, commit yourself to a triathlon club, start to do some tough mutters, start to, whatever it is, it might not be about fitness, it might be about, you know, go and do yoga, meditate, clear your mind hang out with like-minded people. Very much so. In fact, we even have a cheat sheet that can help people find out what type of accountability they prefer. And once they can work through that, then it's understanding what's my trigger going to be and what's my new habit. And in fact, this cheat sheet will actually help guide you through what's one of the six best habits that I can start with that will have this cascading effect like exercise. And where can we find that cheat sheet, Melita? Well, head to getalife.tv. <laughs> yeah! She's done. I'm out of a job. She's done. You've been a champion. Thank you very much for spending your time with us today. Thanks for having me, Craig. Now, Carmen, what are you going to blow me away with next? Right, we've got some bicep curls, so I'm going to get you to start curling just one at a time. Let's do this. This is not light. 
Next up, we have Con, who's gonna show us all about how to keep our lips looking luscious. While I pump some iron. Good work, keep that going. Big and luscious lips are absolutely beautiful, but when they're dry, flaky or cracked, they do not look very good. And today I'm here with Con from Nutrisynergy, who's gonna tell us how to keep that perfect pout all year long. You know, looking after our lips is so important. We eat with them, we speak with them. Most importantly, we wanna be able to smile confidently without them cracking or chapping or uh, being irritated. And we sustain damage uh, through a number of things. You know, we can have wind damage, sun damage, and that can dry out the lips. Or you know, when you suffer a cold and your lips become dry, and then you smile and they crack and all of the pain associated with all of that. So it's important that we understand Sometimes uh, we can, uh, you know, uh, prevent that damage from occurring by looking after them well with a, a very good quality lip balm mm. or if we sustain that damage they really need some good repair jobs. Now I know when I have dry lips I do tend to use like a balm but it leaves an oily base on my lips and I can't put lipstick on top of it which is quite frustrating for a woman of course. Um, is there an alternative to that? Certainly, and look, unfortunately it's common. Petrochemicals or petroleum uh, Vaseline sort of becomes a base for a lot, a lot of lip balms. And that's good because in a sense it you know, shields the, the lips and, and um, you know, gives them some time to, to rebuild the moisture levels. But you can do much better. So we've got products that uh, are designed with natural uh, emollients. And that means that you actually get absorption into the lip. Mm. So therefore, if you want that healing for chap crap, crack lips it's going to happen faster because you're actually uh, moisturising the lips and uh, that can be also important if you're thinking about putting makeup over the top or lipstick because when you get a product that absorbs into the lips you don't have to worry about lipstick bleed and you can put it around your mouth you know we've got infants with saliva rash and they want to mm. be able to put the product further around the mouth area or even men they don't want to have shiny lips and have a lip balm <laughs> that just looks like they've got glossy lips not going to look very good at the gym with a man rocking Certainly up not. on a treadmill with Certainly. shiny lips i agree with that yeah so if with a deeper penetration of these lip balms it obviously lasts long and you don't have to reapply as often? Well look, a, long, a common lip balm would last 20 minutes, maybe 30. Um, the Nutrisynergy lip balms last for three hours. Mm -hmm. So you're getting long lasting protection and, and repair. And the important thing is, uh, you know, you can be confident while you've got the lipstick over the top, the NS3 beneath is actually doing its job, restoring those lips to a nice, healthy, um, soft, supple condition. What's good about that too is if you're only applying it every now and then, you're gonna use less and then your jar lasts longer. And if you've got lipstick, you can't really apply it over the top of the lipstick. So you want to put a lip balm on there that's going to last a long time. And if you're out in the, env in the environment, you know, you're sort of going for a jog or you're out playing sport, you know, that, that damage is, is significant. So uh, it's a good peace of mind to have that lip balm on before you get outside. I've got a couple of young kids too. Do you think um, these products are gentle enough to use on children? Certainly. Because they're natural and chemical free, <laughs> you've got the safety factor of giving it to children. <laughs> Obviously, whatever you put on your lips, you are going to ingest some of it. <laughs> and so it's, it's just good to know that you've got a natural product which doesn't contain any chemicals or petrochemicals, which are the base for common lip balms. And so a therapeutic product like the NS3 can just give you a much better result all around. I really like the NS Lip Complex formula because it's so concentrated. A little bit goes a long way. It's also really good when your lips are really dry. So when you've been out in the sun or the wind and they've become really chapped. So flavour is quite important to me too. Is there specific flavours on these lip balms? Uh, well, that's, I'm glad you asked because a lot of lip balms, you know, you can get banana and raspberry and all of these mm. flavours. Well, because NS is natural, we use honey, which flavours the lip complex, okay. and we use pawpaw, which has a nice flavour for the lip balm. So you've got two nice flavours. Obviously, they're flavoured by the natural ingredients because you want them to taste nice. Um, and so we don't use artificial colours uh, or fragrances, so you're not going to get that nice sort of lolly flavour, mm. but you'll get uh, lip balms that are really acceptable for children and adults to use. Jump online to the getalife.tv website and check out some of the great offers we have available for you. Thank you so much, Con. What have you got for us next week? Next week, Marissa, I'll show you how you can have the perfect hands. Awesome, sounds great. Can't wait to hear all about it. Thanks. Well, that's it for this week's show. We've had a great session here at PT469. It has been intense and now we're doing a bit of a wind down. Carmen, why is it important to stretch after a workout? Look, it's just really important to make sure that we're recovering effectively so that we can come back tomorrow and do it all again. Tomorrow? What do you think about that, Ty? I don't know about tomorrow, but for five special viewers tonight, we do have five of these great fitness mats from Ray and Judy at Mattastic to give away. 
If you want to enter, go to our website at getalife.tv and follow the links. And if you want more information about any of these great segments, that's where you'll find it too. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you again next week. And while you go get a life, I think we need to get some water. We do, please. Thank you, Q Water. Thank you. Thank you. And, um, thank you. How do I make it stop hurting? <laughs>